Though it may seem like ICU care is very advanced and may not apply to the careers of many healthcare providers, critical care medicine will help enormously even outside of the intensive care unit. In fact, critical care often occurs outside of the intensive care unit in rapid response care for unstable patients anywhere. For example, understanding triage, knowing when to transfer a patient, evaluating a patient in shock or respiratory distress, or resuscitating an unstable patient prior to transfer to the intensive care unit. Acquiring the fundamental knowledge as well as cognitive and technical skills necessary to provide safe critical care are essential early in medical training. Establishing minimal standards for ICU care can be used to develop and expand critical care capacity. Critical care means patient care that is time critical, preventing deterioration, disability, or death. It can occur in any location, but often leads to admission to an intensive care unit. The Society of Critical Care Medicine in the United States defines critical care as the direct delivery by a physician of medical care for critically ill or critically injured patients. A critical illness or injury acutely impairs one or more vital organ systems such that there is a high probability of imminent or life-threatening deterioration in the patient's condition. The College of Intensive Care Medicine of Australia and New Zealand states, An ICU is a specialized, staffed, and equipped separate and self-contained area of a hospital dedicated to the management of patients with life-threatening illnesses, injuries, and complications, and monitoring of potentially life-threatening conditions. It provides special expertise and facilities for support of vital functions and uses the skills of medical, nursing, and other personnel experienced in the management of these problems. In many units, ICU staff are required to provide services outside of the ICU, such as emergency response and outreach services. Where applicable, the hospital must provide adequate resources for these activities. The European Society of Intensive Care Medicine says, intensive care is the medical specialty that supports patients whose lives are in immediate danger, like when a vital organ such as heart, liver, lungs, kidneys, or the nervous system is affected. For instance, cardiovascular incidents such as heart attacks or strokes, severe infections, acute respiratory infections, neurologic problems, post-operative care. Intensive care resets the balance of the patient's defective vital organs before the patient can be transferred to another medical specialty. One of the most important resources for intensive care units are staff that are specially trained in caring for critically ill patients. ICUs are run under the direction of a medical director, a physician who has been trained and certified in critical care medicine, and is responsible for overseeing all aspects of the ICU as well as supervising and facilitating other staff members. The medical director should have a full-time commitment to the functioning of the ICU, including scheduling other physicians with at least one ICU specialist for the unit at all times. He or she also ensures appropriate education programs are in place. ICU specialists are physicians experienced in ICU care. They must not participate in duties outside of the ICU if it detracts from the care of ICU patients. All physicians must also be trained at providing advanced life support. A nurse manager holds a post-registration qualification in intensive care or equivalent experience. The nurse manager assigns appropriate nurse to patient ratios and ensures appropriate education and training for all nursing staff. Nursing staff should also have post-registration qualification in intensive care or have equivalent experience. They should be competent in providing advanced life support and undertake refresher training annually. 
ICU ancillary staff can include physiotherapists, nutritionists, biomedical engineers, radiographers, pharmacists, social workers, pastoral or clergy care, and others. Smooth functioning of the unit is dependent upon several other administrators who manage secretarial service, clerical duties, cleaning services, and can include equipment officers and a research officer. ICUs should be separate units from other hospital units, but should be in close proximity to the emergency department, operating theaters, and radiology. Additional resources that need to be quickly accessible include pharmacy, laboratory, and blood bank. The physical design of the ICU should contain a main patient care area with separate work areas for physicians, nurses, and staff. Additionally, there should be space for equipment and utility rooms. Manager offices and staff facilities should also be nearby. Intensive care units range broadly in size. Some recommend that larger ICUs be divided into more manageable pods of 8 to 15 beds maximum. Critical care and monitoring requires appropriate nurse-to-patient ratios that should not exceed 1 to 2 for non-intubated lower acuity patients and should not exceed 1 to 1 for intubated or unstable patients. Clinical monitoring by a vigilant nurse is the basis of intensive patient care. This should be supplemented by appropriate devices to assist the nurse. Basic monitoring must include circulation via pulse, ECG, and blood pressure, ventilation via observation, capnography, and blood gas analysis, and oxygenation via observation, pulse oximetry, and blood gas analysis. Critical care also involves specialized equipment, including mechanical ventilators, defibrillation devices, vascular access equipment, and many other essential tools. Protocols and in-service training must be provided for medical and nursing staff on all equipment. To ensure patient and staff safety, monitoring of equipment for malfunction must also occur. Common equipment monitors include piped gas failure alarms, oxygen supply failure alarms, oxygen analyzers, alarms for breathing system disconnect, alarms for ventilator failure, humidified temperature alarms, and air embolism with renal replacement therapy. Finally, monitoring must continue when ICU patients or critically ill or injured patients are transported from one location to another and should include ECG, SpO2, ventilation, blood pressure, and mechanical ventilation equipment if relevant.